You can see I'm still rocking the hat, but it is a different color. It's the crofter's cap. Yeah, so yeah. So what happened? Because you were going to try and get an appointment. Well, she did not have any cancellations last week, but she did have one for today. So okay. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to go in, and she's like, she and I were texting, and she's like, "Well, did it relax?" I'm like, "Yeah, not so much." She's like, well, you washed it, right? And did a conditioner and all that. I'm like, yeah, all the things you said. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then I even did like, I, you know, internet, I Googled like, and it said something about like a hot olive oil treatment. So I tried Ooh. that and put a plastic grocery bag on my head with hot olive oil for like a half hour. <laughs> it did not help. Like, look at this. It's I, very curly. It's very curly. I feel like, yeah. Uh, That's okay. I did resist. I resisted the urge to like and just bed. I'll tell you what I'm going to try to ask her if she can do. I don't know okay. how to work out, but I might try to do the Jamie Lee Curtis style. Like just very, very short. Yeah. And like a little spiky and, and then we'll just see. Yeah. Or she has some magical solutions. She can relax the whole thing and make it go away. I don't well, that's, know. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I my only thought on that is that it might be too soon after it to do the relaxer. The magical, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, she should be able to and just uncurl it. You know. Well, that would be ideal, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the farm, <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold here, and you said it's supposed to be sixty something tomorrow yeah um i mean i know so we're we recording this so it will be all be done by the time right who watching. knows but at this still, point still. we had really weird weather on saturday i think it was we woke up it was like 50 degrees in the morning yeah and then we had like a front come through yeah, yeah. and it snowed we got a half inch of snow wow. then it melted then i went into the bathroom for three minutes, I came out of the bathroom and I looked out the window and it was a whiteout. Wow. It was completely, I've never seen it snow so heavily here. It was ridiculous. And in 20 to 30 minutes, we had a half inch of snow again. And at that point it stayed uh, overnight until by the next afternoon, it was melted again. And yesterday it got into the low fifties and by tomorrow it's supposed to be 61 for the high. So, yeah. and really with the way new England weather works, I mean, part of me is like springs here it's over. We get blizzards into March all the time. Like yeah. this oh, yeah. is not necessarily over at all. I have three memories of uh, having blizzards on Easter Sunday. Yeah. You know, so into April. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. this is why New Englanders have a reputation for being like sort of unimpressed and just like, you know, like mm -hmm. a little hard nosed and whatever. Cause we're used to disappointments like this. We can't <laughs> let ourselves get excited about things. Oh, I know. And I, I remember one year, the only reason I remember this is just because of the numbers. It snowed 19 inches on May 19th, May 19th. And I, I just, you know, I remember that because May 19th was my grandmother's birthday, but then also the 19 inches on the 19th of May. The 19th, yeah. And that was maybe five or six years ago. Yeah. We, uh -huh. it is not unusual for us to like, we don't plant anything outside for real. We don't plant tomatoes until maybe Memorial day week. Uh -huh. You're better off waiting till after Memorial Day. But if you're feeling a little particularly lucky, then maybe you'd plant them around yeah. the 20th. Maybe not. Yeah. yeah, I think the law here is that your snow tires have to be, or studs or whatever, like whatever the winter preparations are for your car have to be off again by Memorial Day. But they'll let you keep it as late as Memorial Day because it, you never know. Right. Yeah. So we had the similar thing happen where it was 51, 52 degrees. And then we had this cold front come in and then the high the following day, uh -huh. was, the high was like 21. Ugh. So we went from mid fifties to the mid twenties yeah. for a high temperature in like 18 hours. Yeah. It's crazy. So now this morning it was negative 
I think my mom texted me and said at her house, it was negative eight. It was <sighs> negative, like negative five here. Yeah. So when I went out, you know, when I went out, I leave my glasses here in the house because you put the thing on the, then it fogs up and then that freezes uh -huh. and that doesn't help. So I put my cowl all the way up, uh -huh. and then, but then the condensation makes your eyebrows wet because you're right. breathing and then that freezes. Well, Jana, <laughs> I, oh, I sent you this. on Facebook oh. Ooh, that was patterns that have nose holes. Ooh. <laughs> I might insert a picture of that here because you was, have to. Yeah, I you will. have to find that. They're they're not disturbing in the least. <laughs> there, well, the full, the full fair aisle them. faces just are like out of a nightmare. Just <laughs> we've had snow on Halloween before. You could totally just wear that for Halloween. Yeah. Yep. Put a little blood right. at the corners. You know? <laughs> right. So yeah. So viewers, stay tuned for the hair saga. However, <laughs> speaking of tuning in, this podcast this week is all about this garter section we're knitting for our hap cowl. Yep. You're further along than I am. Well, we were watching shows last yeah. night. And um, yeah. So, and what you can knit for your garter section, what, what you can, sorry, not what you can knit, what you can watch Netflix. We have recommendations for yeah. what you enjoy. Mine are sort of scattered around the different, um, streaming services, yeah. but yeah, basically, you know, online streaming, good, good shows that you can watch while you're knitting. Yeah. And we don't have like well, it's all online streaming. Yeah. I mean, I don't have regular TV. Yeah. Does anybody have regular TV anymore unless you live where there's, I mean, I don't know. Do they? We do, we do but we never use it. Like, because we have, because we still pay for cable, it comes with our internet. Oh, it's a package thing? Yeah. It comes with our internet. And then because we have the cable package, it gets us the logins for like Peacock and oh. PBS All Access and whatever that, like we get those streaming services for free because we get the cable package. package. Right. So, and I don't have anything like that because we live in the middle of nowhere. And so I just right. pay for, I just have to nickel and dime it and pay for all the little things individually. Yeah whatever yeah there's no grouping we don't have convenience like that <laughs> anyway so we're knitting back and forth and again yeah. you are using for viewers if you're just tuning in you are using traditional shetland wool from uradale yeah. farm uradale yarns they're jumper weight yes. uh yep and i am I using fingering weight fingering weight yarn from a girl and her wool and if you're wondering about my colorway don't don't wonder about it because it was a one of a kind, not one of a kind. Well, I mean, it is, but the batch, she died specifically for me for a rich, an event that I did. For your event, yeah. So it's not publicly available. However, she has wonderful things on her shop that would work equally well. Right. So we're doing the garter stitch. And I will say, I, I will reiterate that my gauge is not the same as the pattern but I made sure I have plenty of yarn. And we talked about that in our last video. video. Uh -huh. um, and you have plenty, you have, you're knitting two gauge in the pattern. Right. And I am not. Right. So I will, I cast on, okay, this is a 60, this is a 60 inch cable. Uh huh. And I cast on 357 stitches. Wow. Because so you're like way farther along than me and you're knitting way more stitches than I am. I was watching shows. <laughs> but the reason being, I have six stitches, six stitches per inch in my blocked swatch. Mm -hmm. So. And I think mine is four. Was it four for mine? Yeah. Cause you're knitting to pattern gauge. Yeah, I think so I, four. so what I did, if people want to know what I did is I just measured this carefully, my blocked swatch. Then I looked at the finished size uh -huh. is roughly 63, 64 inches for the finished cowl length. 
And then I did my math and then I came up with a multiple of 17 since the chart is right. You know, a repeat of 17 stitches. And that's how I arrived at 357. Mm -hmm. So, and I have more than one, you know, and I have more than one full skein of this. That's 463 yards. So Mm -hmm. I have more than one. So I'm not concerned. I might be playing yarn chicken with my minis. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But you can, I mean, the way that you're doing your minis, you could, I feel like sneak some more in if you needed to. I can. And I have more, I do have more purple-ish minis. So if I need to like, I figured I would do this. If I need to like fade in with one color and fade out with a different gradient, Mm -hmm. fine. It's it's a choose your own adventure kind of thing. I'm the boss of my pattern. That's right. And I'm the boss of my egg crate. I know. I love that. <laughs> so cute. And, and I can kind of close it and like rubber band it to keep the cats out of it. So that's smart. <laughs> Very nice. Good use of, of uh, available materials. Materials. That's the word. I was going to say technology. I guess it's a form of technology. <laughs> egg crates. It's just an old form of technology. Yeah. Yeah. All right, should we talk about some shows? Let's talk about some shows. Okay, I have a list, you have a list. I didn't see, you said you added to yours. I didn't see. A little bit, but I have a couple of things to talk about. Let me start with this. A little bit, oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, let me start with this. I'll explain this first. I'm going to put a link down below from a, a, a YouTube where... Okay, let me back up. One of my patrons, thank you, Val. She posted a link in our patron group to a video about this woman's top five, like period. Okay. And then it was really funny because then the woman's husband is like, yeah, but all those are like, you know, foofy, whatever. He goes, here's my top five, her husband. (laughs) And so that was kind of fun. So she has recommendations for 10 shows, but then she also has a list of 72 period pieces. So we'll post the link. I'll post the link for those things. If you want to go dig around and investigate something, you know, if you have a different preference than what like we are that watching. genre. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I just thought that that was cool. So thanks for sharing that, Val. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey. You want should, should we take turns? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to go down my list. So this isn't in like this is in the order I thought of it as I was making the list. It's not like Yeah, same topic. with me. They're not in any particular order. Yeah. Okay. So the first one on my list is a movie. It's called Patrick. I would say it's the equivalent of a Hallmark romance type movie. So maybe a little cheesy? It's a little cheesy, but it's well done. It's out of the UK. And it's definitely like it has to be set in the UK. It couldn't be set in the United States. Okay. So the lady is young and single. and her grandmother dies and leaves her a pug, her pug. The dog. The dog, yeah. And then it's how this lady finds love. And it's like every every step along the way, it's sort of like Patrick the pug's fault, you know? But here's the thing, like it couldn't ever happen in the US because every time Patrick does something, it's because he's off leash. Oh. like they're walking somewhere and Patrick's walking at her heels and then he's gone, you know? And then it's like, Oh, where's Patrick? And then she bumps into a cute guy, you know, kind of like whatever stuff like that. And it just struck me as I was watching it. I was like, this could never happen in the U S because everywhere you always have to have your dog on a leash in the UK. I see people without their dogs on leashes all the time. They are so well-behaved. They're like, glued to their leg you know as they go out on walks yeah and that always has blown my mind that the dogs are so obedient they're well trained yeah yeah they yeah they work with them to to do that yeah and uh yeah and so that was the thing that struck me as I was watching this like this could never happen in the U.S. well let's just say let's amend that a little and say it could not happen where you live in the U.S. so I know, I do know very obedient farm dogs in Arizona. 
I that have a very obedient dress. farm dog. He yeah. totally listens right, to me. Right. He's, he's like Velcro boy. Yeah. And he, I can call him back from a rabbit. Like he'll right. take off and I'm like, nope. And he'll, he'll listen. He'll come back. Right. But see, if your dog ran off and you went chasing after him, you wouldn't be somewhere where you would run into a cute guy because you live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's so it true. still would have to be Point. in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and he wouldn't run off anyway so yeah okay right. so that's all right good thing i already have one right yeah, yeah that's already handled so good thing yeah that was handled many many <laughs> years ago so yay good for me should we just take turns yeah go next okay so i have been watching um 1883 which right. we've talked about a little bit it is the prequel to yellowstone I know lots and lots of people are watching Yellowstone. Even at the feed store here, they have Yellowstone like ball caps and t-shirts and hoodies with the, the Yellowstone brand, uh -huh. like the cattle brand from, right. from the show. And I'm like, it reminds me, I only watched one episode of Yellowstone because they had it for free on Peacock where you could watch the first episode for free. And then, you know, of course they want you to pay for the rest. Right. And I was like, you know, I, it's okay. It reminds me a great deal of Dallas uh -huh. from the 80s. It reminds me a lot. Now, Kevin Costner is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. The actors are amazing. But I'm like, nah, it's the whole land baron, whatever. I, you uh -huh. know, it's, it's fine. What I'm really, though, enjoying is the prequel to that. From It's called 1883, and that's on Paramount Plus, which used to be called CBS All Access. Uh -huh. Anyway, 1883 is... For mature audiences, I mean, it is not suitable for workplace or family viewing um, just because of the the things that happen on the, the trail, you know, the tragic things and the violent things that happen, not just, I mean, like cattle, like bandits and thieves, you know, robbing and attacking the wagon trains and that kind of thing. Anyway. Yeah. And just stuff that happens like tornadoes and weather and just things. Anyhow, right. it's, it's certainly, it's interesting from a historical perspective. And I think they've really tried to make it as genuine as they can, as far as what the pioneers would have gone through. And if it has Sam Elliott, how can you not love it? He was in, see, that just made me think of another one. So I'm going to, your list is longer than mine, I think. So now I'm going to transition to to the next one because yeah. you mentioned sam elliott so there's this movie that went straight to netflix and it has the pole dark guy in it too the guy oh. who plays pole dark oh i gotta write this down yeah you're gonna you're not gonna thank me for recommending this it's not a good show but oh. it was filmed <laughs> in my hometown it's called the man who killed hitler and the bigfoot and it's on netflix what? And it's Sam Elliott and the guy from Poldark. And um Okay, the man I enjoy it because I know where everything was filmed. Literally everything. I know where it was filmed in this. Like when they're on the streets downtown, I know where they are. When Sam Elliott's sitting at his kitchen table and there's like a window right here, I know what house it is based on what's outside that window. There's a, a scene where he's fighting the Bigfoot and yeah. it literally like six months before that was filmed, my dad had taken me on a walk to that spot because that's where he used to play when he was little. Yeah. So I'm like every single scene. And so it was a trip to the memory ridiculous, lane But it's, it's a not ridiculous, a good stupid story. And, but it has Sam Elliott and, and, the pole, the dark, pole dark guy. And it and I, I, that down. surprises me that it's a stupid movie and it has both of them in it. You would think, right? You would nope. think. Figure. But no. But okay. no, it's really, it's really like, how did this get made? I don't know. So we'll put links down below for all of these things. Okay. Or people can Google either way. But yeah. Okay. okay. You want to <laughs> tell us another one from your list then? Since I No, you go that. ahead because oh. your list was longer than mine. So okay. So speaking of like where your family comes from and, and, you know, the 1883 was all about the pioneers and everything. I've also been, you know, you and I have talked about this some, I've been kind of interested in genealogy because there's not a whole lot, like my family's information doesn't go back that far. 
mm-hmm. so far and partly because there's a a person that that is missing that i can't seem to locate right. so anyway i've been investigating that ancestry.com familysearch.com all of that but there's an interesting show that's called who do you think you are and it's about like they'll take a celebrity and hook them up with professional researchers and professional right. genealogists and then they'll trace that person's lineage as back as far as they can of course these people have a great deal of disposable income so they can fly to wherever they need to to go to whatever right. courthouse to get all these documents and stuff but it's certainly it's super interesting um one of them i can't think of the woman's name right now but one of them she found out that one of her ancestors was on trial for murder Oh, wow. And it was super interesting because this woman was convicted of murder. And then she became one of the very first women incarcerated in that state's prison. And they didn't know what to do with her because they had never had a murderess right there before. And so they weren't quite sure what to do with her. Anyway, she and uh, I won't ruin this, what happens, but it was interesting. (laughs) That's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, that's not really interesting. It it's is amazing just, the stories yeah. you can find because I think we tend to gl- like glorify our ancestors and like they were so perfect and they worked so hard and whatever. And then you start digging and you're like, mm, okay. <laughs> well, <and laughs> they like were the, people too. Part, yeah, and part of the the hole in my family, the missing branch, is because I think someone wasn't truthful on a census. Uh-huh. Like she th- indicated she was a widow. Right. But I think maybe that's not true because back in the early 1900s, for example, it wouldn't have been s- so socially acceptable to be divorced. Right. So she may have put down widowed instead. Mm-hmm. But I can find no record of this person's death at all. Yeah, which is not uncommon, unfortunately. Oh, so I don't know if it's true or not true. So I'm kind of at a, I'm sort of stuck at the moment. Yeah. Okay, my next one is a very new one. I think when this comes out, I think there will only be uh, four episodes out. It's on Apple Plus and it's called Severance. Oh. And it is directed by Ben Stiller. Really? Uh Uh-huh. And it has, I can't think of his name right now. He was in the office and in Parks and Recreation. He was like the cute, quirky guy in Parks and Recreation who was with Leslie. Now I can't remember his name. Anyway. I um, am not so. So severance refers to separating your memories between your work life and your out of work life. So when you go into work, you have no memory of your real life. And when you leave, you have no memory of your office life. And so it's like you sever your personality into two. It strikes me that that would not work for you and I. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) So it's like they show them like going down the elevator to work and like a transition happens, you know, as the memories leave and they become the other side of themselves and then anyway so so it's um it's only two as we're filming there's only been two episodes i would say it is rated mature so far it seems to be just because of language there hasn't been anything graphic or sexual or anything like that um and it really just really fascinating how they deal with it in the in the first episode there's a new recruit who is going through this experience for the first time and and they're like having to train her and walk her through it. And there's one point where she's like, I just wanna go, like, I'm out of here. And the guy's like, okay, well, that's the stairwell there, right? And so she, you then see things like from her consciousness where she steps out into the stairwell and then it becomes the hallway again. And she's like, what? And then she goes back out into the stairwell and it's the hallway again. And what you figure, what you find out is happening is she's getting out to the stairwell and then she's changing her mind and going back in the hallway. But in her perception, it's just, she doesn't get that stairwell part because that's her other side. That's, you know. Crazy. Right. So there's, you know, enough after the second episode to know that there's some dodgy stuff going on. You don't know what it is. You don't know 
who or what's involved or how or anything like that. But yeah, it's just, it's really, it's been very interesting so far, I would say. Just very interesting stuff. And then you do see, uh, was his name Adam? I can't, sorry, I can't think of the guy's name. Anyway, still, he, the, the main guy, yeah. you see him at work and you see him out of work. And like the out of work side of him is sort of wrestling with the fact that he made the decision to do this, oh. you know? And so like there's protesters who are like, this shouldn't be allowed. And he like gets really defensive and angry about it. And anyway, it's just, it's, it's just. So that's kind of a mind bender. Yeah. It's a bit of a mind bender, but it definitely is at this stage anyway, like a, com it is a comedy. It's not like a oh, okay. raucous okay. comedy, but you're kind of like a disconcerted comedy, I yeah. would say. Yeah. 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 Cool. So I'll mention a cup of, of course, we've talked about this before. You know, I like the British cop shows. And so, yes. you know, we're, I mean, all grouped together, Shetland, of course, and then Vera. So, right. right. So the final season of Shetland has come out recently. And then I'm back a ways on Vera. I think I'm on like season four or five. Oh, wow. You're so lucky. You have so much Vera. I know. You. That's what you're, that's, <laughs> but I like Vera. I like Vera a lot because she's, super smart and a little crotchety i mean she doesn't right. take any guff from anybody she doesn't take any nonsense at all so yeah people you know. try and give her guff too because she looks like she's overweight and like not like super fancy dresser or anything and so no, i think that people wears, have the tendency to be yeah. like all right grandma you know kind of and she just puts them right in their place it's yeah. wonderful and i think she's she's like a real person yeah you know yeah she's yeah she's like a, she's a real middle-aged i'd say late or mid to late 50s well obviously you can see why i like her <laughs> 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 yeah a little frumpy doesn't really dress very well kind of snarky don't give yeah. me any crap kind of person <laughs> I like her. Yeah. And like, so every episode's like a movie, basically. It's a, not, they're 90 minute episodes and you get the whole story. Story. Yeah. So Vera yeah. is fantastic. I get, I need a good dose of Vera this afternoon, maybe. Yeah. But I know each, each episode is kind of a standalone, but there is the sub story. Oh yeah. Yeah. That connects like, sure. you know, things are going on in the background. You that learn about their lives and, and the characters. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah. Of course. Okay, my next one is one of my favorite movies ever. Oh. It's called The Hunt for the Wilder People. It is absolutely delightful. It's based on a book called Wild Pork and Watercress from a New Zealand author named Barry Crump, I think. Okay. And he he has, I'm actually reading the book now. I've had the book for a couple of years and I'm reading it now. And it's sort of aimed at young adults. But his writing style, he's sort of like, he's very well known in New Zealand is my understanding. And he writes about um, like people living in the outback or living on sheep ranches and yeah. whatever. He's a very straightforward writing style. But this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the movie is this kid who is in foster care and he's taken to um, a farm on the edge of the out that not the outback that's Australia so it's just at the edge of the ranch property or the sheep station the the the, the wild forests of New Zealand I can't okay. think of the, what the word they call it now um, my apologies to the New Zealanders I do apologize um, but he uh, so it's a, a older man and woman who are married and she's like all excited to have this boy come live with them. And he's like gruff yeah, kind of yeah. fellow and whatever, you know. And um, the, the, I won't say everything that happens, but the, the boy and the man end up out in the wilderness together. Okay. Being pursued by authorities because they think that the man has kidnapped the boy. Oh. Um, but that's not why they are out okay. there. Um, and it's just, it's just a very like two misfits who interesting 
learn, you know, learn to love each other and, and everything. And it's just delightful. It is, I, it's just like one of those wa- movies that makes you feel good about humans, you know, oh, it's we directed, should watch that. Yeah, yeah it's so good. Okay. It's directed by Taika Waititi. It's yeah. definitely a comedy. Like this isn't like a, you know, epic kind of, mo- it's a comedy okay. movie, but it just, it's absolutely delightful. I love it. I tell everybody about Hunt for the Wilder People. I think everyone should watch it. There's okay. a joke about Coke Zero, which just makes me laugh really hard every time. <laughs> like that. Yeah. I love Coke Zero. Um, yeah. Hunt for the Wilder People. Okay. Awesome. I, okay. Well, while we're on the topic of, it, you know, wilderness adventure kind of things, it's, I like all the survival wilderness adventure shows. Like, even, okay, I won't say all of them because some of them are super stupid. <laughs> well, and I know that there's plenty of people that would argue that they're all super stupid, but it's that's kind of my that's kind of my guilty pleasure thing because you know how yeah. I love camping and backpacking and all that kind of stuff. So I like the shows like History. It's on the History Channel. It's called Alone. You know where they have the it's a it's the contest of it, and you and these people go out into the you know Canadian tundra and they have to survive as long as they can, like by themselves. And they get to take ten things with them, and they get to choose their ten things, and that's it. Like they don't have somebody bringing them bags of rice, like on Survivor. They don't have that. They have to go, you know, dig up roots and kill a squirrel with a bow and arrow or a rock or whatever, you know? Right. And they survive as long as they can. And the one that, and they don't, the thing is, is they don't know how long that's going to be. They have no idea. And they have no idea who else has dropped out. Oh, wow. So it could be 60, 70 days in. They have no idea how many people are left, whether whether there's only one person left or whether there's nine people left. They have no idea. So are they all are they all dropped off in the same spot or are they scattered around? No, they're oh, scattered alone. around. Right. They're <laughs> scattered around. And so uh-huh. I think they and the, and one thing I read about that is that the site locations are chosen where there's natural barriers between. So they they cannot okay. feasibly go find someone else because right. of a body of water or a massive cliff or right i mean they're not supposed to be seeking out that would defeat the purpose of the contest but but yeah they're they're within the same region but i think they're like at least several miles apart Uh uh-huh yeah okay so then they have a button so like if they're ready to tap out or they're done or there's some like serious injury or whatever they do have a a gps personal locator where they just can push the satellite phone button and say come get them i'm over it come get me yeah yeah nice so i love all that kind of stuff so if people have more recommendations i've pretty much well do you have more on your list that you want to but i'm saying if people have other recommendations for those like survival shows for me yes and it kind of along that same vein i also like the historical reenactment ones like frontier house pioneer you know house where colonial house manor house all of those the victorian farm tudor farm all that kind of stuff where people go back and and live authentically in that period for a certain time. Right. And I think that's fantastic. Those are amazing. I think I want to say Frontier House was the first one. I remember watching that. That's the first one I remember. Yeah. That's the, that was the PBS production. That's the, really the first reality TV show that I remember. Yeah. 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 And that was pretty foundational. I mean, I think that changed those people's lives. Like let's give up the electronics and live. I think, I think I've I've told you before, but one like my favorite part of that particular show was when the one family, the mom, like finally put her foot down and was like, I want a doctor here. I want him looking at my family. My family is sick, you know, blah, 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 because they lost weight and they were tired. And the doctor and the doctor came and checked on them all and was like, This is probably the most fit they've ever been in their lives. And they're tired because they're working hard. <laughs> and I was like well that's a wake-up call isn't it (laughs) yes one thing I really enjoyed about that first series however was a lot of the kids particularly really realized that that connection that family connection was really important I mean they didn't have their video games they didn't have tv they didn't have movies and they realized that they wouldn't necessarily go back to the way things were before that the kids really liked the 
the family bond. closeness and the, yeah. yeah. And I thought that was really transformational for yeah. a lot of the participants. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It was um, interesting. All sort of the little things you don't think about when that are different between life like that and life that we have now, like um, for instance, the flies, like they have a meal, a big meal, and they cannot keep the flies away. Like they have nothing that yeah. will keep yeah. the flies off the food. Right. And right. so it's just, there's just flies everywhere. And I'm like, don't, that's like, you just don't even think about that. Right. You sit, you know, cause when you live indoors. You don't think about that. Right. Or you can afford, you know, you can afford to have covers for all of your picnic stuff. Right. Until it's so time. You just and then, come backpacking with me. Right. Yeah. Well, you, and you're, you're basically doing that when, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, they you're don't have to be a, a, you know, like, a singular pioneer who's crossing the country <laughs> with a backpack. Right. Yeah. But I do have the luxury of, you know, like canned fuel where I just go. Right. Lick my bick and. There's and bug spray, you know, like mosquito. Or, yeah, and I don't like I don't do bug spray because chemicals, but mosquito netting for sure. Like mm-hmm. you know the hat. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's okay. Hey, next one. Yeah, next, next one. Next one. Uh, around the world in eighty days, they've remade it again. There's lots of versions out there. The one I uh, have been watching just ended this week. It's on the masterpiece add-on on Amazon, and it's David Tennant is. Uh, Phileas Fogg. Of course, he's fantastic in everything he does. He is fantastic in everything. And this is a great, like, I read the book maybe three or four years ago now. So I'm not expert on my commentary as far as like how accurate they stuck to the book. But the main characters are there. The main stops are there. And I thought it was very well done. Very enjoyable thing so it just the finished the last episode aired this last sunday so yeah. like two sundays before when this goes out anyway and really so. anything masterpiece theater is going to be quality you know that. yeah i mean yeah it's all very well done. great and small yeah and that one is that one was family friendly so you can have the kids around while you're watching it and not worry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good so at masterpiece theater masterpiece theater all creatures great and small oh yeah Fantastic. That's great. Hey, did it just end? Was the Christmas season special two. the last one? I haven't, I'm not caught up on season two yet. Okay. Um, because we watch that when we're all together. And so when my oldest comes home from like, we're waiting to watch some of them until she's home from school. So I am not yeah. really current on those, but I I've seen some of that. Yeah. Okay. And that's the thing with British shows that are seasons. It might only be four or six episodes and that's a season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. Lot, a lot shorter seasons. I'm going to Google yeah. real quick because we were that. watching it last night. Okay. And on that same note, Masterpiece Theater, I think, oh, maybe it isn't. Poldark is fantastic. I don't think that's Masterpiece Theater, though, but watch Poldark. Love it. Poldark was great. <laughs> So yeah, lot. that was so that was it. So the Christmas special is the last one. So there's seven episodes in second season of okay. All Creatures Brains Mom. Yeah. So I'll add Pole Dark to, to the list. Absolutely. Pole Dark can be pretty steamy. Well, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but the story is awesome. And the scenery Very interesting. The, costumes, yeah. the scenery, the costumes, the you know the whole mill, like plight of the mill worker kind of thing or not mill mine mine worker for sure so yeah yeah. what else you got are are we through your list nope i got a couple more so two of them i'm going to talk about at the same time father brown and sister boniface okay sister boniface is new she showed up in a father brown episode like several seasons back Think Murder, she wrote, set in an English village with religious figures as Angela Lansbury. Oh. Okay. So Father Father Brown is probably closer to that model because he's just like, you know, Angela Lansbury was like a writer, mystery writer, right? And so she yeah. had that experience. He's a priest, but he's solving all these crimes, you know. Sister Boniface, that, that one's in its first season. I've only seen a few episodes so far. 
she actually was a spy or worked worked at Bletchley Hall, I'll say, during World War II. Okay. And she's been trained in like forensic science. So while Father Brown wow. is more like deductive reasoning kind of stuff, Sister Boniface is like, like she will take samples. <clears throat> excuse me. She'll take samples and run them herself and like do all that kind of stuff I, and I, I would probably really like that yeah it's actually I I hate to say it I kind of prefer it to Father Brown Father Brown like near and dear to my heart we've been watching that for years now he's got right. a lot of seasons but the police chief in Father Brown is like chewing the scenery he overacts so much <laughs> chewing that you're like can someone sedate him for a while because I'm worried about his heart. Like he's just going to burst one day. I haven't heard that Whereas, phrase, chewing the scenery. Oh yeah. That's when they're just like out of control with their acting. <laughs> Sister Boniface, their Sister Boniface's police people in the area seem to like acknowledge her skill and appreciate her. Whereas <laughs> Father Brown, the police chief is just like constantly annoyed that he's there in yeah. a very like overly worked up manner, you know? Anyway, I enjoy them both. I think I would probably really like Sister Boniface just because of this, her, you know, the addition of the science part. I'd probably really yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, and one fun thing to do while you're watching Father Brown is pay attention to the knitwear, right? Yes. Because as, as the episodes and the, the seasons progress, uh -huh. you'll see the same sweater on different people. <laughs> okay. So there's like a yellow fine gauge yellow sweater that shows up like once a season on a different character every time, you know, but I love it. It's like, oh, there it is again. But there's like, they have like four or five sweaters that are like that, that just like show up. So, so watch for the sweaters, okay. watch for the sweaters. Funny. So I know I've talked in the past about Vikings on the history channel and you can also get that, um, on amazon prime and mm -hmm. i'm not sure if you have to pay for the seasons or not anyway so i've watched all of vikings and i've talked about that before not family friendly historically accurate lots of battles and sword fighting and yeah not it's for mature audiences only i will say that anyway so the last season of that was out a couple of years ago i think but now coming up on netflix is a new Viking series called Valhalla. And awesome. it's supposed to be a, a sequel and it's set like at least a hundred years later. Okay. And, and historical characters that you would recognize the names of, like in the preview, they were talking about Leif Erikson. And right. right. So that's super. So I, I'm kind of excited for that to come out because I like all that Viking stuff. And well, yeah. you know, the Vikings, the characters in Vikings, they think we're real people, are based oh, on Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. His brother who went and studied or settled in Normandy. Rolo, yeah. Rolo, yeah. Rolo is one of my ancestors from way, 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 way no, back. No, you're yeah. related to Rolo the Walker? Yeah. Wow. I learned that a few years ago I when I was, uh, so I too had... A, a block in my family history. I couldn't get past my grandmother for the longest time. Wow. And finally with family search, I was able to, and it connected up to uh, a family line in Canada, in French Canada, yeah. that were relatively famous. He was the first apothecary to come okay. to Canada okay. and his wife opened schools for the native populations. And so like she has, they each have statues to them up in wow. Quebec, Montreal or something. Anyway, because they're famous, their genealogy has been done way, way back. Yeah. And one of them, or maybe both, I, you know, how family lines can be, they connect up to Rolo. And so I was like, he's my 89th great grandfather. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Interesting. Super interesting. So watch for viking valhalla if anybody yeah cares i'm looking about forward to that one that should be very cool i mean okay. yeah and also obviously battles and sword fighting and all that right. so and that's like i really enjoyed vikings as well i thought that as time went on it got a little weirder you know 
Oh, you mean with the, yeah. Hmm. With Floki and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It just got a little stranger. And yeah. I've been, one of the shows I had on the list that I actually took off, but I'll talk about it in the same sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Is um, Britannia. Right. Which is set at the time of the second British invade or Roman invasion of Britain, like in the sixties AD. And, um, so you have the Romans, you have the, the, a couple of local tribes, and then you have the Druids who are set up as their own tribe. Right. Um, and they're all, you know, all their interactions and it's, we don't know very much about the people in time. Then there's just not records for it. So it's a lot of made up and it's sort of like magic is real. And the Druids are in control of that and everything. And, and so you're like, okay, you know, like all this stuff is hat fine, whatever right. suspension of disbelief kind of thing, you know, for these first two seasons. But then the third season has started, and now it's like they've introduced an element of like uh, this woman from Rome has come over, and she's a priestess of Satan, and they're eating people and like all that. Stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, this just got really super dark. Like it got super dark in the start of the yeah, third like, I don't need that. And so I'm like, I don't know that I want to watch this anymore. Cause that's just like, before it was like weird and whatever. And now it's just like, guys, like, uh, now it's nasty. It's gross. Yeah. It's gross. So yeah. anyway, if you want to try Britannia, I recommend the first two se- seasons. And then maybe that's then- a good stopping point. It's a good stopping point. Yeah. Right. Anyway. <laughs> I know. So what else do I have? That's pretty much it for my, oh, well, the only other one I'll mention, just um, kind of going back to the British cop show things and, you know, like forensics and mostly just observation is, of course, the Masterpiece Theater production of Sherlock. Oh, yeah. That was great. Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a fantastic. If you have not seen that, it's just witty and funny and you know i maybe i just don't remember but i don't recall it being like super gory or anything it's, it's been so long since i've seen it well check the rating you know i would he's, I would, he's definitely a drug user in this one and so there's like the drug use sequences that can be kind of right. crazy right but i don't recall um, anything super like crime scene gross yeah, I, I honestly don't remember. I don't remember either. People should, you know, they check the rating, read the reviews, whatever. But yeah. of course, it's, you know, Sherlock, so it's brilliant. Right. Yeah. My last one is The Gilded Age, which is on HBO Max. It's uh, produced by Julian Fellows, same guy who did... Bridgerton? Did he do Bridgerton too? Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just no, making... No, the guy, you know, the one... No, I don't. In the Manor House... Oh, Downton Abbey. Thank you so much. I hit my brain sometimes. He did Downton Abbey. Um, and this is basically, it's marketed as Down, Downton Abbey in late 1800 New York. Right. So you have old New York versus new New York. Right. So there's those two elements. There's also an African-American character who is trying to break out of the african-american scene and just be part of the scene right um and then there is a a niece who was based in pennsylvania who was brought into an old money household who just thinks the whole thing's silly because she wasn't raised around it and she's just like what is wrong with all of you kind of right Right. so those are sort of and then you have it's upstairs downstairs in the two main houses that you're introduced to and And yeah so far that one of that one, I've heard that the costuming and stuff is fantastic. So if you're into that, then yeah, that's a yeah. good watch. We talk, we, my daughter and I watch, my youngest and I watch both of those together. And we talk, we call all creatures great and small, the sweater show. <laughs> and we call Gilded Age, the dress show. Like we don't even call them by their real names. We're the like, are you ready show. for the dress show? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, we go and watch it. Yeah. The new money lady in Gilded Age, her dresses are amazing yeah amazing and you can tell like a lot of the times with these period dramas Uh you can tell they've cut corners on the costumes because budgets yeah you know yeah but I think Downton Abbey 
change that first of all like they invested in the the costumes and man have they done the same for these like these they know i think they know now that they can have displays and touring shows of just the costumes and so they've gone right. ahead and just like done them right like you can tell she is wearing silk like that is a silk dress and it is gorgeous i know and a I lot know. of people talk about bridgerton in that way too just that the costuming is fantastic like you know i know people either love bridgerton or or not and that's totally fine but just on a note season two is coming out if that's your thing if not then you know whatever i know that you and val who i mentioned earlier were like that's so stupid it's basically soft porn but (laughs) a story with a story along with it that may or may not be ridiculous but the costuming is wonderful in that as well lovely as well yeah but this is like this this one is really because everyone is trying to show their wealth through their clothing so it really like the old new york is more understated yet still amazing right the new New York is just straight up gorgeous. Like it is like they have the money and they're not afraid to let people know that they have the money right. with their clothing. It's amazing. Cool. Yeah. I started watching it and was sort of like, well, I'll see if this is something I'll watch with my youngest. And as soon as the one lady walked in in her dress, I was like, Abby must see this immediately. <laughs> we got to Yeah. Enjoy the dress show together. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So the last one I have to talk about is completely different. It's on Netflix and my daughter and I are watching this. It's called The Magic of Humans. And mm-hmm. it's, so this guy, I forget his name is Justin something, something. He's a magician. Right? No, he, no, no, Willow, Willow, Will, I don't know. He's obviously well-established, you know, very good magician, but it's, um, it's an amazing show because not only is he just doing this, you know, magic tricks, but he does some funny stuff. Like he calls, like there's one thing called up, up close magic in each episode. Uh-huh. And it's where he'll like stand like this close to someone, like <laughs> up close magic. And I'll have teeny weeny little playing cards like that are this big. And the whole premise wow. is that if you're up close, you know, you can't, it's harder to do sleight of hand and people can right. see what's going on. Anyway, so that's funny. And then he had this one thing that's not even magic. It's just all about the human brain and your psychological perception of things so he does the thing where he has like i'll just show you this real quick he has like a barrier like right here okay Uh uh-huh and then he'll put like a drape over over this arm so this is my real arm and i have my arm here and then he'll put a fake arm right in front of me and this is draped right here so i can only really see my the fake arm okay so then i'll take a feather and tickle it on the fake arm and tickle it on then tickle it on my real arm but I'm watching him do it on the fake arm while I'm feeling it on my real arm. See what I mean? Right. So then he'll do some other things like scratches or sandpaper or whatever. And, and through this process of a few minutes, you start associating the fake arm as your real arm. So then he'll pinch your real arm and be like, do you feel that? And the people are like, no, because he didn't pinch the arm they can see. Oh, wow. So I'll leave it at that. You know, that's, I want to watch like- it. But it's amazing what happens at the end of that episode. When um, that's like based on real science. Oh, yeah. Like oh, for yeah. people who Absolutely. lose a finger or a limb yes. or something. Yes. So yes. like use mirrors to yes. help them like scratch the real arm and the brain yeah. processes it as the other arm. So right. like so at one point, at one point, he like really pinches hard the real yeah. arm. And the people are like, nope, don't feel it. <laughs> And then he pinches the rubber one, the fake one, and people are like, ow. It's just, anyway, so it's called The Magic yeah. of Humans. I, that's on Netflix. Our brains are weird, man. Anyhow. So yeah, we could talk like for another hour about all TV. I know. However. I mean, I hope people got a few rows done while they were doing that. I was just, I realized I'd messed up a stitch. So I was dropping back and fixing it as you were talking just then. So while we're talking about Gage, I think the pattern like says we need to do like, 40 rows or 20 ridges of garter mm-hmm. stitch or whatever i think it's four inches i think she said four inches yeah so i'm going by inches because my row gauge is not the same just as my stitch gauge is not the same anyway it'll be a you know time for some quality tv yes so. yeah i've got i think i have i've got about an inch and a half done is all so i need to watch some more shows i have I guess so I you gave have, me a good list to work from. 
I have about two and a quarter. Nice. So, all right. Okay. Thanks for the recommendations. Yeah. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.